bless you. God bless you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. You must be awake tonight because something great, unprecedented, something you never saw before is coming upon your life. But let me remind you, let me remind you that God has a plan for you. The reason he touches you, one touch of the king, the reason why that touch comes upon you is so that that plan he has for you, with that touch, you become strong, healed, healthy, delivered, set free. And that touch now gets you to the point a new life is beginning. A commencement is beginning in your life. The enemy wanted to kill you. But God said, no. You will not die. And to show the enemy, he made a great mistake by coming your way. He said, all right, even the time he ordained you will die before. He says, you will not even die now. He will add 15, 20, 25. He will add more to your life in Jesus' name. Now, the 15 years he adds to your life, what are you going to do? God will now expand the plan he had for you before. And today, I want you to relax. Whatever happens, you are going to have additional life. For long life. He will talk to me today. Me. It will touch me today. You are saved, it will still touch you. You are sanctified, it will still touch you. Because you need that extra touch that will take you places you have never been before. Listen to me now, even me, the preacher, he will touch me. And just one touch, mountains will move. Just one touch in your life, let the whole land, let them hear. And let every mountain hear that you are getting a miraculous touch tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. You are ready to touch everyone. Ready to turn every life around. And ready to give us extra years to live. So that the plan you have will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. As we read your word. As we hear everything you are saying. Even during the message, continue to touch lives. At the time of prayer, continue to touch lives. That this congregation here and there, everywhere, online, radio, television, that this congregation of today, worldwide, will have a new touch from heaven. Confirmed in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Today we're talking about freedom in fullness. Through faith in his faithfulness. You see two things there. Even more than two. Faith and faithfulness. Faith and faithfulness. Why do we have faith in God? 
because he is faithful if somebody is unfaithful if somebody is undependable whatever he says whatever promise he gives what are you going to do with that the man the woman is unfaithful i love you but he's unfaithful i will help you but he's unfaithful you cannot depend on anyone except you know that that fellow is faithful whatever he tells you whatever he promises you whatever he says he will offer the reason you believe and you have faith is because he is faithful that's why we have freedom in fullness through faith in his faithfulness he'll be faithful to every one of us look at john chapter 8 verse 32 and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free understand it says the moment you know the truth at the moment you hear the truth that truth you have faith in that truth he said there is no other blockage no wall of demarcation between the first line and the second line the first line you shall know the truth the second line it will follow it will be the consequence of the first line and the truth shall make you free you understand then all you need to do is to hear the truth and to know the truth at the moment you know that truth what will follow automatically is that the truth shall make you free and then in verse 36 verse 36 says if the son therefore shall make you free if the son will come to you that's the son of god that's jesus christ he says i know the bondage i know the yoke i know the mountain i know the string and the shackles and the chains that tie you but i come to you for a purpose what you could not do for yourself i want to do for you if the son therefore shall make you free it says again look at that there is no other wall there's no other sentence there's no other condition there is no maybe there it says the first line the son making you free and then it says ye shall be free indeed tonight you are free indeed there is no wall between you and freedom tonight there is no demarcation between you and freedom tonight there is no contradiction there is no condition there is uh, nothing your sins in the past and your weakness in the past and your deprivation in the past and the sickness and the power of the one that held you captive all that does not matter all that does not come in now because if the son shall make you free ye shall be free indeed and our christ our savior our redeemer is a faithful christ is a faithful savior look at hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 let us hold fast the profession the confession the declaration of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise you understand the faith we have in him is so solid and is so stable because he is faithful he cannot deny himself whatever he has promised whatever he has declared he is faithful he doesn't waver it doesn't shake it doesn't change and it is that power that he has and he has given the promise in faithfulness that's why we have faith let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering because he is faithful that promise and he's going to do it in your life tonight 
is going to perform that needed miracle in your life tonight in jesus name uh, let's look at three things one two three like we're climbing steps we want to go upstairs you are going upstairs today you are climbing in step one two three and then you are there and you are there and the healing is there you are there the miracle is there you are there and the salvation is there and god has so built the staircase that each step is small enough for you to take step one and then step two and then step three, and you look around, my environment is new, my situation is new, my life is new. He has made me now to have a higher blessing that I ever had before. God bless you, and God make it possible in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, number one is the decree of the Father, our Father full salvation for our full salvation he's made a decree and decrees that nothing can change and when god says yes nobody can say no number one is the decree of the father for our full salvation number two the deliverance and freedom from all foul spirits foul spirits you know when we're playing uh, football on the on the field and somebody touches the ball only his legs should have touched they say foul foul and satan has been you know doing foul foul evil spirits have been doing foul foul in our lives all that foul we're going to get away tonight he doesn't, you know, he doesn't follow the rule. He doesn't listen to the master. And he doesn't look at your desire. And then he plays foul in your life. We'll stop him tonight in your life. Number three is the declaration of faith in the faithful Savior. Look at number one now. Number one is the decree of the Father for your full salvation the decree of the father for your full salvation in psalm 2 reading from verse 7 i will declare the decree that's the almighty god talking i will declare the decree the lord has said unto me thou art my son this day have i begotten thee he was talking about his only begotten son and the only begotten son was uh, to come to this world and deliver us and save us and wash away our sin and the previous verses the kings of the earth they were raging and they were saying why why is he going to sin when the when the angels fell you didn't send a savior when lucifer fell you didn't send a savior and you planned a judgment punishment on satan on lucifer and all his fallen angels but now men have sinned and you are sending a savior therefore they were raging but god said whether you're rich or you fume, or whatever you do, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Verse 8, in verse 8, ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen. You know, the Jewish people, they thought they were the only one and we didn't have any, any chance and any share in that salvation. But God the Father said to God the Son, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth, uttermost parts of the earth, beyond jerusalem it's not only jerusalem people alone that will be saved and beyond the land of israel it's not only the land of israel that will be saved but all the people to the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession and the lord asked of you 
asked of you, asked of you from the Father. He said, those people far away, anywhere in the world, I'm asking of them because I died for everyone. And tonight, as you respond to that, call of the Lord, you become the possession of the Lord. And Satan cannot touch you again. You belong to Christ. You belong to the King. Because he asked of you on the cross. And he said all the price that you ought to pay. He had paid everything. And he said it is finished. And now you can come. Tonight you will come. Look at Job. Reading from chapter 22 verse 21 in job chapter 22 verse 21 acquaint now thyself with him don't be a stranger to him to the lord to your savior acquaint yourself with him he's calling me he wants me to be his possession he wants to bless my life he wants to cleanse my life yes but now you've been far away why don't you come to him and acquaint yourself with him and be at peace once you know him and you touch him by faith and he touches you by his faithfulness you will be at peace salvation comes you'll be at peace regeneration comes he renews your life he refashions your life you will be at peace the peace of god the peace and salvation will come to your heart today in jesus name he says thereby good shall come unto thee good shall come unto thee all the people in the world because Satan is the God of this world and is vigilant, is watching. Any good thing on earth, any good thing for eternity, wanting to come to people who are out there, Satan, Lucifer, he'll block that. He's an unhappy man. He's a sorrowful man. He's a dejected man. Because, you know, that's why those demons were saying, are you going to torment us before the time? They knew that torment was coming. And because of that, if you are going to be relieved from torment, from torture, and from eternal punishment, they are jealous of you. And they want to block the goodness of the Lord coming your way. You must understand when you are told come to Jesus raise up your hand believe on the Lord Jesus and then something else is whispering and saying don't go you are too old to raise up your hand now you are already an old man don't go or you are too young why don't you enjoy all the wild oats of the world before even if you are going to get saved that's Satan that's Satan he wants to destroy your life so that good will not come to you you will not give your life to satan you will respond as the lord is calling your acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace thereby good shall come unto thee good shall come unto me good shall come unto me look at verse 22 in verse 22 it says receive I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, if thou return to the Almighty. That's how good will come. That's how salvation will come. That's how the peace of God will come to you. If thou return to the almighty thou shalt be built up thou shalt put away iniquity transgression sin wrongdoing far from thy tabernacle far from thy tabernacle and good will flow into your life salvation will flow into your life and then as it goes on look at verse 27 in verse 27 it tells you there thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee 
when you return to the Lord, when you repent of your sin, when you say, I'll not continue in that way again. Now, you're free to pray because you are acquainted with him now. Because he is faithful and you have faith in his faithfulness, it says, now you can make your prayer. As you come to the Lord, the Lord will forgive you. The Lord will change your life and the Lord will give you salvation, real salvation with eternal life. He shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows. Then all the promises you have made to the Lord, since he has been faithful to you. You said, I'll not walk in darkness again. You must pay that vow. I will not go with the gang anymore. That's your vow. You must pay that vow. I will not um, take whatever does not belong to me anymore. I know God will supply all my need. You must fulfill that but look at verse 28 verse 28 thou shalt also decree a thing you remember the father makes decree we read that in Psalm 2 and because you are now a child of God a child of the father you too now like father like son like father like daughter he your father he makes a decree and the devil cannot say no now that you become acquainted with the father who makes decree and the decree is fulfilled you now as a child of god a son of god a daughter of god and you have the nature he makes us partakers of the divine nature as we come to him and so now we're in authority satan will no more be in authority in your life and all those evil powers, evil uh, spirits, you know what they've been doing? Uh, they've been kicking uh, their subjects like ball. They kick him this way, he kick her that way, and they control his life. This, uh, the devil will never control your life anymore. In the dream, in the day, anywhere you are, now you have the final say in your life. Any person of dark power, occultic power, say you will die. He doesn't have final authority in your life. You have the final say. Once you come to the Lord, you believe in the Lord, you are acquainted with the Lord. Now, thou shalt also decree a sin, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon your ways. Congratulations, your life will never be the same again. Because the decree of the Father is for your full salvation. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, deliverance and freedom from all foul spirits. All foul spirits. You know, if you have, if you listen to people that have been visited by the foul spirits, the foul spirit doesn't have any pity for any man, for any woman, for any boy, for any girl. And sometimes the foul spirit will make the fellow know. L look at this story I'm reading to you now. It's in Mark chapter 9. Reading from verse 20. Mark chapter 9 verse 20. And they brought him, the boy, unto him our savior and when he saw him straightway the evil spirit tear him wanting to tear him in pieces and he fell on the ground and wallowed for me the boy didn't want that because that brings shame in the public that brings shame in the class that brings shame in the market that brings shame 
on the road that brings shame in a taxi that the sea just seizes that boy or that girl or that man or that woman falling on the ground and wallowed for me verse 21 in verse 21 and he asked his father how long is it ago since this came unto him and he said of a child is grown up now of a child and there are many marks and wounds in the body scars why verse 22 because of of times often it has cast him into the fire isn't that showing the wickedness of that evil spirit isn't that showing the mercilessness of that wicked spirit and it says it cast him into the waters and then if he didn't die into the waters to drown him and a person like that he goes to swim and the devil gives him a leeway some freedom and he says now i want to swim like my other friends and they go into the river and the devil comes at that time in the river to drown him but he's managed to remain alive but a miserable life a life that didn't have any peace but if thou canst do anything this man the father was not acquainted with jesus yet that's why he said if thou canst do anything he was not acquainted with his power with the purpose of coming the people who say if if thou canst do anything and the people who say if if it be thy will you can cleanse me that's a leper he had not been to the meetings he had not heard of the power of christ is not acquainted with the faithful savior the people who go to god i am sick if you can heal me once you put in the word you are not acquainted with him who is faithful and so he said if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us look at verse 23 in verse 23 jesus said unto him it's not that if is not on my side coming from heaven i didn't bring if from heaven as a healer i don't have if in my vocabulary or dictionary and in my life of faithfulness of having compassion and saving a soul and healing the sick and delivering the oppressed i don't have if in my vocabulary you are the one having the if so he sent the if back to him if thou canst believe it's in your hand i can heal any sickness christ is saying i can deliver any oppressed person christ is saying i can save any sinner look at Saul of tassos i can save anyone the if is not on my side all i know is come i'll give you rest come i'll save your soul come I'll deliver you completely. Come and I will give you a ticket for heaven. Amen. Amen. The if is now on your side. If you come, if you believe, and if you trust me, if you have faith in my faithfulness if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth that's all and to you tonight what you have come for that's possible 
what you are dreaming of that's possible the blessing of god in your life tonight that is possible he will change you one touch changes everything every bad thing every evil thing every dirty thing every oppression every yoke one touch from the king of kings will change everything tonight in jesus name verse 24 in verse 24 and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears lord i believe help thou mine unbelief look at that look at that look at that lord i believe but underneath that lucifer that evil power was tormenting even the father in the heart do you really believe and so he said help thou my unbelief uh, there are two forces there were two forces walking in his mind and one uh, one voice is saying believe accept go to him the other one is said don't believe and the lord is so wonderful he overlooked that unbelief underneath he looked at the faith and the belief that he had when the man said lord i believe why wouldn't i believe you you are the son of god you are the savior you are the healer you are the deliverer you have done it for other people you'll do it for me i believe and then something else in the mind in the heart saying no you don't believe you have unbelief and jesus overlooked the unbelief and he helped him he will overlook all the unbelief you have and the faith you have even though it's a spark of faith even though it appears as little faith tonight all the same it will save you it will heal you it will deliver you verse 25 in verse 25 when jesus saw that the people came running together he rebuked the foul spirit <clears throat> he rebuked what kind of spirit foul spirit it was unlawful for that foul spirit to be there foul it was not proper for that evil spirit to be there foul and it was not proper to come even when the person has come to the uh, presence of Christ wanting deliverance and for that spirit rebellious spirit and defiant spirit to come with the sincere seeker in the presence of Christ foul spirit seen unto him thou dumb and deaf spirit uh, you see that spirit foul spirit also adds the ability to make that young man deaf and dumb but jesus gathered everything together and rebuked that foul spirit deaf and dumb and he said i charge thee it's not saying please go out of this man he charged him and this is a compelling charge the devil has no choice he has to release you he will not bind you again he will not torture you again the decision and deliverance is in your hand you are the one to come and say here am i now i give myself unreservedly to jesus christ and jesus will not push you back to that foul spirit he said come out of him and enter no more into him the helpers in the world who say they have deliverance they can deliver you they can sprinkle some things on you sometimes the uh, the devil will play trick on 
that so-called deliverer and we play trick on uh, the person looking for deliverance it will you know go out a little and then you say praise the lord everything is all right and then uh, when you are paid the money to the people that said they are delivering you and then you go back to the house now he goes to find seven other more wicked spirits than himself and then they come seeing and life becomes frustrating but in the case of christ our deliverer he says come out of him and enter no more into him the miracle you get today will be permanent the sickness will go and the sickness will not come back again the evil spirit will go and the evil spirit will not come back again the failure will go and failure will never come back to your life again and the depression will go and depression will never come back to your life again look at verse 26 in verse 26 and the spirit cried don't mind you know the crying of that evil spirit you know Osea is confronting Christ and he's regretting and he's unhappy and this boy had been my habitation this young man had been my habitation and now where am I going to get another accommodation the spirit cried am i leaving and then i cannot i'm not allowed to come back to this young man the spirit cried and read him so and came out of him whatever they do they throw somebody to the ground the fellow forms or the fellow rules on the ground the final thing we know is that that foul spirit has to come out and he was as one dead as one dead you understand when he fell to the ground and that evil spirit that used to activate him agitate him that makes him to run and run into the water not fearing anything and get into the fire not fearing anything that evil spirit has gone out and there is calm and there is rest and the father had not ever seen him so calm like that before is he dead no you cannot die in the presence of jesus in the evil spirit that has gone out and then in so much that many said he's dead look at verse 27 in verse 27 but jesus took him by the hand jesus took him by the hand you know if you're going to have this total freedom and calmness if you're going to have this deliverance you must release yourself in the hand of jesus i surrender all to jesus i surrender and then he lays hand on you and he pulls you up now you're on a new journey and the plan of God will be fulfilled in your life. He lifted him up and he arose. He arose with his full mind. He arose with his full control. He arose with the mind to follow Christ. And from today, as you yield yourself to Christ and he holds your hand, it will take you to the place of the plan of God. God for your life in Jesus name evil spirits will cry aloud and they will go out of every life here today in Jesus name and those on radio and those on television as we mentioned the name of Jesus the decree comes out and the word of God is fulfilled in your life you have faith mother you have faith for that child daddy you have faith for that child a headmaster you have faith for that student and anyone under your care that has been tormented by evil spirit or maybe you yourself tonight is the night of deliverance in your life in Jesus name declaration of faith in the faithful savior 
you have an accomplished engineer and you have a mechanic and then you have um, a car that is broken down totally broken down but you know this engineer and this mechanic is never uh, failed in his profession and uh, you are taking the car maybe they have to tow the car to that accomplished mechanic or engineer and somebody asks you do you think uh, this scene will come back uh, full and, and walking and all that you say i am sure how could you be sure my brother because it's not because of you you can't you can't repair that thing you can't put it on the road again and it's not you it's because you know the mechanic the engineer you are taking that car to and good and good enough you take it to him and you explain you say i understand i understand i i, I had a true story true story that there was a man driving a car and then on the road the car broke down will not move will not move at all and a neighbor was coming somebody was coming riding his own car and when he saw that car he stopped as he stopped he came down and uh, the owner of the car that broke down wanted to explain and uh, that this this and they said don't worry i understand and this man coming on the road that met that man he opened the bonnet and he opened uh, this and that and touched something and told the man putting the key in the ignition and everything worked I saw the man was surprised. I've been here. I've lived true story. I've been here. I've played, but I've shaken this and shaken that and all that. And uh, so he asked the man, "What did you do? How did you do this?" He said, "I am Ford. That's the one that had the company that made that car. And so he knew what to touch. He knew what to pull and push. And everything works. Jesus is the manufacturer. Jesus is the creator. Without him, nothing was made that was made. He made your body. He knows all the bones there. He knows all the things that have gone wrong. And then you are parked now by the side of the road. And he comes to you. And he touches you there, touches you there, touches you there. And lo and behold, you are perfectly all right. And then you ask, how could this happen? He says, I am the creator. I am the deliverer. I am the Savior, and I shall come to him with that faith, knowing this is the faithful one. He will touch everything that needs to be touched. He will transform everything that needs to be transformed. You are all right tonight in Jesus' name. And the Lord will do just one prayer just one call everything is done the declaration of faith in the faithful savior we're looking at jeremiah chapter 17 and we're looking at verse 14 jeremiah chapter 17 verse 14 heal me O lord and i shall be healed you see that it's not uh, something that you know we have to go this way go that straightforward heal me O lord and there is no barricade there is no uh, kind of demarcation once you say heal me O lord it says and i shall be healed and i shall be healed instantaneously like that and then the second part save me O lord and i shall be saved look at that heal me and then i shall be healed save me and i shall be saved and that salvation will come upon you today in jesus name and that healing that miracle deliverance will come upon you in jesus name for thou art my 
praise then you praise god then you come out and give your testimony and we will all praise god with you tonight is a night of praises a night of testimony you declare your faith in the faithfulness of the savior and you come you say save me he will save you heal me he will heal you amen are we ready now i said are we ready now remember he is faithful he cannot deny the promise he has given and as you come that faithfulness you will honor your faith and you will save your soul forgive your sin and set you completely free it's bowed and eyes closed our loving god a saving christ is ready for you now and everyone whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved it's bowed and eyes closed you want that salvation now you want the forgiveness you want the freedom and every sin that had blocked the way of salvation for you you want the lord to take it away he is faithful you have faith in his faithfulness raise up that hand amen god bless you raise up the hand raise it up very well anywhere you are and you'll not be the blockage for yourself he wants to save you he wants to deliver you he wants to forgive you and that forgiveness will give you a place in heaven that salvation will give you a place in heaven raise up that hand and say lord i'm here if you're raising up your hand god bless you take another step and rise up on your feet Feet. take another step and rise up on your feet because he wants to give you that instantaneous salvation right now god bless you god bless you god bless you online do that too you are hearing over the radio do that too you are watching over the television do that too his salvation has now come to you save me O oh lord and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Keep on standing. We're praying together now. Understand, because he is faithful, we can have faith in him. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you now. All these people, they have risen up and they are standing and raising up their hands because they have faith in your faithfulness. You promise to forgive and they know you will forgive. You promise to save and they know that you will save them. Lord, manifest your faithfulness. Save them now in Jesus' name blot out the remembrance of their sin and put all those sins behind you that you will never talk about it against them anymore in jesus name the lord gives the forgiveness now in your heart by your faith accept that forgiveness believe that it is done he has forgiven your sin he has saved your soul and the joy and the peace of salvation will reign in your life in jesus name thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray God bless you. That salvation, you've got it. Uh, remain standing. Our counselors are coming to you and uh, they will ask you the right question. You will give them the right answer. We call on our moderating overseer tonight to help us during this counseling time. But please don't go away because healing, deliverance, miracle is still coming to you. Amen. Counselors, please let's go around. See, there are particulars, preferably in capital letters. There are phone numbers. Count the digits, should be 11. And the address should be placed, described 
the quarter, perhaps, if they are in the village, as you describe, maybe at the back, how they can get there. Please, let's do that smartly. God bless you. Please remain standing. Let's be smart about it. Let's be smart about it. And those of us who are online, and you have given your life to Christ tonight, during the pastor's message, there is a link below your player. You should click on it and fill the form that will appear so that we can assist you for your further new work in Christ. Also, if you are listening on radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, please send your name to the phone number that I'm going to read out to you now via SMS or WhatsApp. The number is plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I will go through it again. Those listening via radio or television. Please send your name and your phone number, your location via SMS or WhatsApp to this number, plus 234 our counselors, let's be smart. Let's go all around the field and to the extension by the other side of the road, to the language section, please, to get the name clearly. This is the essence of this crusade. The souls must be conserved and preserved in the kingdom. After you are, if they are feeling it by themselves, please read it correctly and ensure that the names are correct, the phone numbers are correct, and also the house address. Please, let's do that. By the grace of God, there will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their life to Christ on Sunday, 2nd July, 2023. More details about this will be sent to you, and our pastor will be delighted that you will be there to join this special banquet. For those of us in Port Harcourt, there will be the Believer's Banquet on Sunday, the 2nd, July 2023 at Dipalai Bible Church. Time is 3 p.m. In other places in the globe, because of the time zone, but we are to do it the same day on the 2nd of July 2023. So choose your convenient time because of the time zone. But for us here in Nigeria, 3 p.m. and other locations in the country and beyond, you can choose where is convenient at the time, depending on your time zone. Our counselors, I want to see response from you. Let me start by my right hand side. That's your left hand to the pulpit, my right hand side. If you are finished, this uh, long haul and all that, somebody should come and wave the flag 
at me, my right hand side. Right, I can see the flag there. God bless you. Right. Let me come to the middle now. That's in my direct front. If you are finished, can you wave the flag? Right. God bless you. I can see that. I can also see this one here. Thank you. Then by my left hand side, extreme left. Back. Okay, I can see that flag. It seems we are smart about it tonight. And uh, I trust that the Lord, thank you, I can see that flag. I believe that we have gone around the field. Don't leave anybody out, please. Let's ensure that. And if they are not attended to you, please, what you do, you just lift up your hands and they will attend to you. I trust that we have done a good job. Tonight is miracle explosion. Everybody shout explosion. The way you are saying you don't believe it. Shout explosion. explosion. One thing I know, when pastor pray, God always answer. See your yes. yes. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. You remember, save me. And I shall be saved. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Your healing is guaranteed by the faithfulness of the Lord. And because he's faithful, you don't have anything to doubt. There's no doubt. You are going to manifest faith, and it will do it in your life. Whatever the sickness, whatever the ailment, Lay hands where you have the challenge. And raise up the other hand. And the Lord will take the problem away. He'll give you complete healing, deliverance, redemption in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Father, we thank you. We call you Father. Christ called you Father, and all his followers, and all the disciples and children of God will call you Father. We know you to be faithful from the beginning of time until this time, until eternity. Your faithfulness reaches unto heaven. You cannot deny the promise you have made. You have made the promise, I will heal them you have made the promise when they call on me i will hear them lord we come with faith in that faithfulness lord heal the sick tonight in jesus name whatever that sickness is or that disease is in the head in the chest in the lungs in the stomach, in the vase, in the bone, wherever. You are the God of all possibilities. Touch them, heal them in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, open the blind eyes. Unstop the deaf ears. And Lord, loosen the cords of the dumb throat in Jesus name the swelling elephantiasis in the legs uh, near in that part of the body the swelling of a terrible sickness in that body the fibroid anywhere Lord heal them now in Jesus name freedom freedom from all those painful things in Jesus name where you are laying your hand now the hand of the Lord comes over that hand healing deliverance be performed and perfected in your body now in Jesus name 
that brain problem, that insanity, that foul spirit there, I command that spirit, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm the miracle. Confirm the healing. Confirm the deliverance. Right, center, left, online, over the radio, television, confirm the healing miracle now in Jesus' name. You are free. My brother, my sister there, you are free. You are healed. You are delivered. Your freedom in total has come to you now. Receive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. My brother, my sister, my boy, my girl there, it is done. Confirmation in your life. Manifestation in your life and the demonstration of faithfulness of power in your life right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. You got it. I said you got it. Check up now. Check up now. You will see what the Lord has done. And then as our moderating overseer, you know, speaks to you what he tells you to do, to come here, to do that. Do it. And the glory of God will be permanent in your life. Amen.